I'm Dr. Lowy Go. Uh, I'm a cardiologist practicing in uh, St. Luke's Medical Center in Quezon City, Philippines. Uh, my talk was on chronic stable angina, the epidemiology and disease specific burden. Uh, and basically the important points that I'd like to share is that um, cardiovascular disease is still the number one cause of death worldwide and will still be by the year 2030. Um, and it causes about 10 to 65 percent of all uh, mortality worldwide. And of all the cardiovascular diseases, coronary disease um, remains the most prevalent. About 45 percent of all cardiovascular death is due to coronary disease. Um, and for our patients with stable coronary disease, you know, they still have a high event rates, about 15 percent uh, serious event of death, cardiovascular hospitalization, and uh, revascularization. But from the patient perspective, now, even though it's important for us doctors to prevent these uh, serious events, it's really the symptoms, the angina, uh, which uh, affect the patient's quality of life the most and limits their physical activity. So chronic stable angina uh, is also prevalent. It's about 5% of the uh, in developed countries. Uh, that uh, translates to about uh, 10 million people in the States or about 2 million people in the United Kingdom. Um, and the disease specific burden of chronic stable angina, even though the uh, rate of cardiovascular disease and CAD may be going down, the incidence of angina is actually staying the same or even going up. And part of the reason this is is because our patients are surviving longer, they're getting older, um, plus uh, they're more aware of the chest pain and chest discomfort as a serious uh, symptom. And so that's why we're detecting it more. Um, and the interesting thing about stable angina is, you know, not only uh, is it still quite prevalent, but there's a gender disparity. Uh, it seems like we don't manage it the same way in men and women. No? Even though um, it occurs more in men and in older men, when it occurs in women, it actually portends a worse prognosis. You know, they, they, they uh, have more MIs, um, they have more severe symptoms compared to men, and part of this may be because we're not doing as much to uh, evaluate them. Women tend to be less likely to undergo testing for coronary disease, whether it's uh, stress testing or angiograms or non-invasive imaging. And even if we do test them, the women tend to have less uh, likelihood of um, having CAD based on the objective test. Which brings me to the, uh, I think the more important thing about the burden of angina. Uh, the women with typical angina who undergo tests and have no coronary disease may be suffering from what we call coronary microvascular dysfunction or microvascular angina, which is not as likely to respond to conventional agents. You know? So I think this burden uh, is something we need to be aware of because ad unless we uh, get to identify these patients um, and treat them properly, the, the burden of angina on the patient cell status will continue to rise and get worse. Uh, so that is essentially the main points of my talk and uh, thank you very much.